everybody calls me Banky, that's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Shout out to everybody out there on Team Bank and Pam, man. I appreciate the love. Appreciate the support. What's going on out there, man? I appreciate everybody who's been watching these videos and rocking with me. 33 years of prison stories, man. Uh, we got more to come. Too many more. Too much in my brain. But uh, I appreciate all the love, man. I, I hope if you're watching these videos, you like them. You know, uh, subscribe. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, man. We trying to grow, we trying to grow, we trying to get this message out there to everybody. So I appreciate you if you're watching it, man. Please hit the subscribe button, share these videos, like these videos, make a comment, talk to me, y'all know I talk back. Um, This topic right here, man, a lot of people just kept asking me to speak on it, so I wanted to go ahead and speak on it, man. It's about Biggie and Tupac, man. How, how did that go down in prison? And... I'm gonna tell you to be honest with you, man. It was it, it, Biggie and Tupac, man, or Biggie versus Tupac was was uh it was real in prison, man. It was real in prison. Crazy as it may seem, it was real in prison, man. Dudes was actually beefing over Biggie and Tupac. You know, whoever liked Biggie, whoever liked Tupac, dudes was beefing over them. I'm I'm talking about real beefs, real beefs. I'm talking about fights. I'm talking about brawls. I'm talking about pulling the Bethlehem out over Big and Tupac. Two people that don't know neither one of these people or none of us and people was actually beefing over. Um, because they like either one music or the other music and being that both of them was beefing with each other, it just made, you know what I'm saying, more uh, uh, dynamics in the prison where it say he like Biggie, he like Pop, and then they start saying why they like Biggie, why they like Pop, and next thing you know they arguing, next thing you know they rumbling, next thing you know they beefing. So it, it went down in the penitentiary, man. It, it went down a whole lot, um, especially when all of the uh, you know the murders and everything occurred. But uh, me myself, I can remember, man, when I first got introduced to Pop, because like I said, I was in prison, so you know uh, since '87, so Pop won't, won't nowhere around then. But I can remember when I first got introduced to him, I was uh, I was in the cell with my homeboy Vic, Victor Aver Averlas. Shout out to him out there in Texas doing this thing out there. Y'all look him up. Um, but he was young. He was coming from Texas. He had got in trouble down here in VA. He got locked up. Had a life sentence. And uh, they put him in the cell with me. Now, I, at this time, I was on Greensville, man. I'm thinking like 90, 94, 95, 96, up in that area, somewhere up in there. And I can remember Vic, you know, uh, always playing um, Master P. <laughs> you know, Master P Jones was bumping right then and there. You know, I'm about it, about it. You about it, about it. I'm about it, about it. And I liked that song. That was all right. But, you know, that type of music right there, you know, the rest of Master P music, man, I really won't hip to. But that song right there, I liked at the time. Like I say, I was boxing. So I'm working out every day. I'm training every day. So, you know, I be in the cell sometime when he gone and I had the music on and I just be working out, you know, like crazy, trying to be in shape, trying to stay ready so I don't have to get ready. And um, I used to listen to that one a lot. You know, we had this nice little stereo set up in our cell, man, where we could have the little boom box that had the detachable uh, speakers. So we had one in one corner, one in the other corner. So it just illuminated the room, man. It, it was nice. So, you know, I used to get in there and shake out, man, be working out like, like I'm going crazy. And that music used to just pump me up. But um, I ain't, I ain't like all of that, you know, type of music that he played. He played a lot of music that was from up his way, you know, uh, 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 MG, what his name, MGK or 8-Ball uh, uh, and MGK or some all of, all of that type of music and Master P and... Uh, what's his man named Mystical and he was playing all of that type of music and at the time what I was listening to was you know just, just straight workout music man anything that was going on or bumping at the time that's what I would listen to to just pump me up and I remember my birthday was coming up and um, 
He was like, man, I got something for you for your birthday. I ordered something for you for your birthday. I'm like, man, okay, what? I mean, what you want? He said, don't worry, you're going to see, you're going to like it, you're going to like it. So I remember uh, it was the day before my birthday or either on my birthday, I was in the room and I was working out, man. I'm, I'm, I'm shaking out real hard and he was gone. It was rec time, so I'm expecting him to be out the cell. So he come back in the cell early. So I'm in there pouring down, drenching sweat, working out hard as I don't know what, doing you know, push-ups, jumping jacks, burpees, sit-ups, and I'm just, I'm drenched in sweat, and I'm in a zone, you know, I'm shadow boxing up in there, I'm in a zone, and hey, he come in the cell, I'm like, man, what's up, man? He said, man, I got something for you, I said, what's up? So he throw the joint on the bed, and it was a CD, it was the double CD of Tupac, All Eyes On Me, right? So I said, man, who, who is this dude? You know what I'm saying? I couldn't, you know, couldn't even pronounce the name right. You know, that's how, you know, when you're in prison, you lost away from all of the stuff that's really, really going on. You usually get information like years later, two years, three years later, whatever's going on. Even in a movie, if a movie come out, you you, you ain't going to be able to be hip to the movie till like two years later. Maybe they may get it or you may see it. But when everybody else is on it, we late because, you know, we late. We in prison. So he threw the joint on there, man. He said, man, you got to listen to it. You got to listen to it. I said, man, I'm, I'm going to get it later, man. I'm working out. He said, nah, nah, man. You got. I'm telling you, you going to like this. Right? He said, this dude right here, th you know, he was happy. I'm like, all right, whatever, man. So he opened the joint up. I said, I'm back doing my, you know, my workout and everything. So he opened it up. He cut my music off. I'm like, man, what you doing? You know what I'm saying? So he cut the music. He said, man, I'm telling you, you want to hear this, man. So he popped the little CD in there and he went on out to say, he said, I'm going to get the door closed. I'm like, all right. So he get the door closed. I'm, I'm, I'm starting back in my workout, man. I'm doing, you know, uh, uh, toe touches and everything. I'm going, wow, wow, wow. I'm in the zone. And I heard the joke come on. Boom. I won't deny it. I'm a straight rider. You don't want to mess with me. Got the police busting at me. But they can't do nothing to a G. And then this is the part that happened. They got me, right? Because I'm listening, right? And I'm, I'm just, eh, eh. And I heard him say, let's get ready to rumble. So I'm like, hold up. And man, Pop came on it. And he started flowing. And I just stopped my workout. And I'm sitting there and I'm listening to him, man. And he was like, so many battlefield scars were driven in plus cars. Because life is a rap style. It's nothing without scars. We're born rough and rugged. Dressing in mad public, my attitude with, and love it to be a soldier. I said, oh my goodness. Man, I got his shadow boxing in there, man. And I'm listening to this stuff. I'm telling y'all right now, man, I played that same song. I didn't even go through the rest of the tape because I kept rewinding that song and rewinding that song and rewinding that song, man, so many times. And I was working out, man. I got drenched in sweat. And that's how I got introduced to pop. And, uh... I was loving Pac, man. I was loving his music. I was loving his message. I was loving his energy. So, you know, Pac became my guy, you know. So I was on the Pac side, if you want to say Pac versus Biggie, versus Biggie. And to be honest with you, I was a little bit caught up in the beat, but not in the beat so much where I'm ready to rumble about it. But I, it's just that I liked him because I heard him first and, and his music, you know, resonated with me. So I listened to him more so than anybody else. So then... When the Biggie thing came along and Biggie was flowing and I thought Biggie was nice too. I heard a couple of Biggie songs and I thought Biggie was super nice as well. So, you know, I always liked the Pac. So then when they say the Pac ain't like Biggie and, and Biggie ain't like Pac or they had a beef, you know, it automatically divided down the middle. So all of the younger dudes that was even younger than me, you know, they were serious about it, man. You know, man, uh, uh, Pac ain't nothing, man. He ain't real. He ain't, you know, he faking, you know, Biggie is this and Biggie is that. And then you see the dudes out in the block and they arguing, they arguing about it. And, you know, I remember the first fight that I seen over Biggie and Pac was two dudes was debating in the park. Well, it was more than two dudes, but it was the main two is the ones who got the fight. But it was like two or three dudes arguing with about one or two dudes. Two dudes like the uh, Pac, the other ones like the Biggie. So they hollering about why Biggie fake, and they hollering about why Pac fake, and then they get to disrespecting each other. So the next thing you know, these dudes toe to toe, nose to nose, talking about, man, F Biggie, no, F Pac, you know what I'm saying? Pop, pop, pop. They start rumbling. I'm like, man, these dudes is tripping, you know, because that's how serious it was in there. Because, like I say, we incarcerated, we locked up. We ain't really got nothing. We don't really, you know, uh, uh, have a whole lot to entertain us. So dudes is finding things to talk about. They finding reasons.
to 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 try to keep themselves relevant. So you actually in the penitentiary, man, trying to get this bit up off you, trying to do this time. You were here fighting with another dude about these two dudes is out here getting money, super famous, doing their thing, and don't even know you exist. You know what I'm saying? Don't even know you exist, but yet at the same time, you putting your life on the line in prison because you beefing about him. He ain't sent you now damn on your books. Ain't going to send you nothing on your books. Don't know who you are. Ain't gave you no shout out. Don't do nothing. But yet at the same time, you ready to rumble. And in penitentiary, like I tell y'all all the time, any beef in the penitentiary can turn into, uh, you know, something critical. You know, any beef can turn into a big beef. A major beef can turn into you losing your life or you taking a life. So it's all asinine to be fighting about somebody who don't even know you exist. You know, when you really break it down and look at it in this rawest form, that's just reality. You can end up, you know, losing your life or taking a life or staying the rest of your life in prison. And these dudes ain't going to never know you exist. They ain't going to get you no lawyer. They ain't going to get you out. They ain't going to do nothing. Ain't like you can write them and say, yeah, I was defending your honor. I was defending your name, your reputation in the penitentiary. And I got caught up. Man, them people ain't going to know who you are. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, it was going down. It was going down in the prison like that. All the time, you seen somebody on the yard arguing about Biggie and arguing about Pop. You had dudes in there that's so creative, man, that can draw and make art. They would draw big portraits of Biggie or big portraits of Pop. Or dudes would take uh, shirts and, and, and draw, you know, the picture of them on the shirts and be selling the shirts and stuff. And that was crazy within itself because it was all contraband. You know what I'm saying? You could wear the shirt and try to stay out of the way of the police. A dude put the shirt on and, and put another shirt on top of it and go out on the yard and take his shirt off with the police one out there and walk around with the with the shirt on with the portrait of Biggie on it or walk around with the shirt on with the portrait of Pac on it and just waiting for it to be confiscated. So you done pay some money for something that you know they're going to take as soon as they see it. You know what I'm saying? This how caught up they was in the Biggie and Pac, you know, beef in prison. You know, um... Like I said, it was it was a crazy dynamic, man. And I watched the whole thing unfold. It's different when you're in prison and you're watching all of this unfold. you even watching it even closer than everybody else because you're watching TV, you're reading the magazines and what they write in the articles, be it true or false. This is the only information that you have, either news, TV, or the articles that's in magazines or call home and get information from what people are telling you going on on the street with them, you know? So... A lot of dudes would argue, you know, that uh, Biggie, Biggie uh, stole Pac style. Big Pac was a mentor to him. Pac used to look out for him. And then, you know, when everything jumped off, then he, he started using his Pac, all the information that Pac gave him and put it in his music. And then he just blew up. And, you know, so dudes was like, well, you know, Biggie ain't nothing, man. He a snake. He a rat. He da 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 da. And they were like, man, Pac ain't teach him this. Pac ain't teach him that. So it was always those type of narratives that had these dudes clashing. You see what I'm saying? And I used to look at it like, man, this is some insane stuff. And I tried not to get in no verbal debates about, you know, Pac or Biggie because I looked at it like both of them was talented. Both of them was young. Both of them was doing what they had to do, break, beating the odds, getting money, you know what I'm saying, at a rate that we had never even seen before, young people getting money. Because at this time, this was when all the hip-hop stuff was just starting to boom. It was just starting to get so big and so huge that the whole world was looking at it. And, you know, people look at it like the whole world looking at it, but they don't realize on the, on the inside of prison in that microcosm, we looking at it as well. You know, we getting caught up as well. Now, I don't know how it was on the street because I won't on the street. I only know about you know, news articles or, you know, news reports about what was going on on the street about the beef, you know, East Coast, West Coast, this, that, and the third. But, man, just from the inside and the infrastructure, man, it was going down, man. Dudes was fighting. Dudes was beefing and hollering and yelling and screaming at each other over Pac or Biggie every day. Every day you could see somebody arguing. And um, it wouldn't stop, man. And, you know, and, and every now and then it'll break out in a brawl. It'll break out in a fight. Dudes that broke out in fights in the kitchen talking about Biggie and Pop. Broke out in a brawl in the kitchen talking about Biggie and Pop, man. And it just used to always amaze me how much those two dudes resonated with people that was on the inside. Because either dudes can feel their lyrics or feel their hustle. And, 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 and it gave them something to be proud of. So when somebody disrespected it, they felt disrespected themselves. 
you know. And a lot of the Pac dudes was adamant, man. They was they was adamant about Pac, man. The Pac was like a revolutionary. Pac was like, you know, a soldier. And like, man, you ain't going to disrespect Pac, you know what I'm saying, or, or don't say nothing about him, man, or you got something to say about Pac, man, go on over there with that. Or, or I don't even want to hear no Biggie talk. Just because Pac ain't like Biggie. You see what I'm saying? So that made them not like Biggie or not like the people who liked the Biggie. You know, it, it, it's just a crazy dynamic, man. It, it just used to blow my mind at all times, man. But it went down in prison like that. And um, I can remember when it came around to the time, man, where uh, they were saying that uh, Pac had got shot, right? And man, that right there, that just even took the fuel. Yeah, that took fuel and added to the fire right there, man, because once he got shot and then the word came out that, you know, he had passed away. Oh, man, you had all the Biggie fans just hollering and screaming, talking about him. Yeah, I told you. He was faking. He was faking, man. You know, Biggie, Biggie had him killed. Yeah, Biggie and Puffy had him killed. Yeah, he was faking. You know, so, man, that just infuriated all the pop fans, man. It hurt me. It hurt me that the young dude that was so talented, man, and had so much of the world at, at the palm of his hands that lost his life at such a young age, man. And I, I loved his music. I thought he was a genius. I thought he was brilliant. I thought he had a, a mean work ethic, man. He put out good music. He was the first one to put out that devil CD. I think, personally, myself, I ain't trying to get in no beef with no Biggie fans and none of that, but I think, personally, myself, um, All Eyes On Me, that devil cassette, man, the first devil cassette ever put out, I, I truly believe that's the best rap album that I ever heard from beginning to end. From beginning to end, I feel like it's the best rap album that I ever heard, man. I just think he was... Uh, so poetic, so uh, concise, man, so uh, 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 brilliant in, in, in telling the story. And I thought it was just an amazing album, man. I still I still do, you know. I, I, it's one of my favorite albums of all times. But, um, yeah, man, they, 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 that, that turned the beef all the way up, man, to 10. You know, so now dudes that was talking about Biggie and then, you know, saying, yeah, Pac, I knew he was going to get killed. I knew it. Man, dudes got it in. I mean, they got it in. Dudes be arguing and then see it go from you like Biggie, you like Pac, and then you say something about Pac, and then when Pac had, had got killed, you saying something about Pac getting killed. Dudes saying something about Biggie gonna get killed, and then dudes say F you, then you say, F, I mean, dudes say F Pac, you say F Biggie, then dudes say F you, you say F him, and then next thing you know, y'all rumbling, you know what I'm saying, over some foolishness. And it was going down like that, man. I'm telling you, I can't even count how many fights I've seen over there. I can't even count. I seen the dudes beefing one time, and the dude, he went and got to Bethlehem. You know what I'm saying? He ready to kill over the name of Biggie. He ready to kill over the name of Pop. You see what I'm saying? And it's all for entertainment, man. It's all, you know, a business that they doing out there. It's these people we'll never know or we'll never meet. You know what I'm saying? Most of us, 99.9% .9 of us. But yet at the same time, they was affecting the penitentiary with their popularity, with their music, they was affecting the penitentiary. They was affecting dudes bit because dudes was getting them beasts over there. Every beef you get into in prison, like I say, it's a possibility to be a dangerous beef. It's a possibility that you're going to get more charges. It's a possibility you can get a street charge. It's a possibility that you can lose your life or take a life. So to be arguing about somebody that you don't know or you may not, it ain't like they're talking about your family. But you couldn't tell these dudes that because they were so caught up, they looked at them like family. They looked at Biggie like family. They looked at Pac like family. So when you talked about them, man, they, they took it personal, you know. I done seen dudes sitting at the table, man, and um, they walked by and heard dudes saying something negative about Biggie or something negative about Pac, and they'd go out of their way to come back and say something. I mean, what you saying, man? I mean, what you talking about? You know what I'm saying? Woo, woo, woo. And then next thing you know, dudes got to stand their ground in there. So somebody stand up, somebody talking, somebody get in somebody's face. And next thing you know, they rumbling. And then their homeboys jumping in. And then they homeboys jumping in. And then you got an all-out brawl in there. And we end up going on lock. And they say, what y'all on lock for? Man, dudes got to fight in the pot over Biggie and Pop. Man, get out of here. Yeah, it was going down like that. It was going down like that on a regular basis in there, man. The whole time, everything was going on. And then you had dudes that kept on with their conspiracy theories saying, 
Oh, yeah, Pac dudes gonna ride. They're gonna kill Biggie. Watch what I tell you. Biggie gonna get killed. You know what I'm saying? Them outlaw immortals, they're gonna kill Biggie. You know, they're gonna kill Puff too. Cause they did it. They set it up. No, Shug set it up. No, it won't no Shug. I'm telling you, man. Man, uh, Pac was getting ready to leave Shug. I'm telling you, man. Shug set it up because he didn't want Pac to leave. I mean, all types of theories. Every theory that y'all heard out here in the streets was, was going around in the prison. Rumors in the prison. Don't nobody know what happened. Everybody's speculating, but everybody got their own size, and they standing on it. And they ready to rumble for it. They ready to push that Bethlehem for it. You see what I'm saying? I had this partner named Black, Lil Youngin. He was one of my little youngins. He loved Biggie, man. And I used to tell him I love Pop. So every time he'd see me, and, and we we go play basketball or go do something, he'd always bring up some Biggie stuff, and I'd bring up some Pac stuff. And then he'd be like, Biggie ain't, uh, Pac ain't better than Biggie, man, I'm telling you. I said, man, Pac better, Pac better, man. Pac a better lyricist, man. He got better rhyme. No, he don't. And he'll quote a Biggie line. I I quote a Pac line, you know, where he said, give me, give me Pac hardest line. What you think is his hardest line? And I say what I think, and then he'll turn around and say what he think Biggie hardest line is. And, and man, it was just back and forth, back and forth, where it got to a thing where me and him said something. Every time we seen each other, that's what we was talking about. And then um, I remember when Biggie came out with the song with uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony, because Bone Thugs and Harmony had started popping. So when Biggie came out with the song with Bone Thugs and Harmony, and, um, he had a song on there with uh, Jay-Z on it too. Now, I thought the song with Bone Thugs and Harmony, man, I thought that joke was dope. I can't even lie to you. I thought it was dope. You know, when Biggie came on there flowing like them and he was just showing his talent and that he was just so talented that he could, you know, flow in so many different ways. But that song right there, when I first heard that song, I think that might have been the first one that I heard that I really, really liked in the song. And I would say, oh, you know, this dude, yeah, he, he really shot. You know, we can armed and dangerous. Ain't too many gonna bang with us. Straight up, we in the toy yard. You know what I'm saying? I said, yeah, that, that joint was nice. But he had the Jay-Z and uh, Biggie song on there too. And that's what he used to always uh, quote to me. He said, yeah, Jay-Z, Biggie Smalls, make you poop your drawers. He said, yeah, that joint hard, you know. And it was hard. And then I turn around and tell him, I said, yeah, where Tupac say, grab your Glock so you see Tupac. Call the cops when you see Tupac, you know, so it was just a back and forth, back and forth, but more so with me and him, it was more like fun and playing, you know what I'm saying, but to other people, it was serious, to other people, it was, it, it was real serious, they took it to heart, you know, they weren't playing with it, you know what I'm saying, like, I don't want to hear nothing about Biggie, man, or I don't want to hear nothing about Pac, man, don't come around me with that stuff, mean, mugging and talking mad and having attitudes, and dudes gonna, you know, they gonna bark back at that. Man, I ain't trying to hurt that. I talk about anything I want to talk about. You know, what you saying then? What you saying? Boop, 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 boop. It's on. You see what I'm saying? That simple. That's how easy things pop off in the penitentiary. And Because it ain't nothing going on in there. Ain't nothing going on in there. So we living vicariously through other people's career, through other people's accomplishments. You know, and these people don't even know who we are. You know, I use the music to motivate me. I use the music to work out. I always, um, when I was boxing, at that time too, I always went, went, you know, with a pox song before I had to fight. I always went with a pox song in my ear, man, on my on my headphones before I went to train, before I went to spa. Because, like I say, I felt like his music was motivating. I felt like it was, it, it resonated with me. I could feel it. You know, I could feel it. I could understand it. I could hear his pain. I could hear his hunger. I could hear his, his, his struggle, you know. And then I related to the fact that, you know, he come from, you know, a Black Panther family, a revolutionary family. So he was raised with a revolutionary mindset. And I felt at the time, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm revolutionary because I'm fighting for my freedom. I'm fighting for my liberation. You know, I'm locked up at a young age. Don't know how long I'm going to be locked up. Don't know how long I'm going to be here. So I, I, I could relate to his music. Biggie music to me was more like party and girls and 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 and. and, and Glitz and glamour and jewelry and, and all of that type of stuff, which, you know, in the penitentiary, if you locked up in there, you know, that's what you think about as well. You wish you could have that life opposed to the life that you, you, you have received because of your choices in life. But at the same time, when Pop was talking about that motivational stuff and that thug stuff, and then when he could thug life, you know what I'm saying, and I understood what it meant and, you know, how he was, like, coming from the struggle, 
I could relate to that more me personally than I could Biggie. You know, Biggie music to me was more like something that you party to, something that you, you know, just, just go out there and have fun to. Pop music was, to me, the same, but a little bit more substance because it also had a message in it. It also had words that I could understand. And sometimes Biggie would rhyme so slick, you know, and so so tight that I couldn't even catch all the words. But you had dudes in there that knew every word to every song. You see what I'm saying? And I'm not I'm not exaggerating. Every word to every song. How they could pick up that, I don't know. I was never able to do it. But that's how you had dudes in there. They, they knew everything. Every Pac song, every biggest song. If Pac did a feature with somebody else, they knew who, what album it was on, who he did a feature with. Same thing with Biggie. You know, and it just divided and conquered in the prison, man. It divided and conquered in the prison because dudes was beefing over and and like I say, shedding blood over these over these differences, man, that they had about who they liked and who they didn't like. So yeah, you know, when Pac died, man, it was just it was it was cold blooded then, man, because I'm saying everybody who was Biggie fans was more or less gloating or laughing or saying something slick. And when they do it around somebody that they know like Pac, dudes took it personal as if you shooting shots at them. You know what I'm saying? You shoot shots at Boy, you coming around me talking, man, ain't nobody trying to hear that. Man, ain't nobody talking to you. And it was popping off. You know what I'm saying? It was popping off. First dude that I seen um, really get hurt that I actually seen over the joint. I remember it was a Biggie fan and a Pop fan. They was arguing about, you know what I'm saying, who said what and, and what went on. And did, did uh, Biggie really have something to do with Pop getting killed? And the dude on the Biggie side was like, man, Biggie ain't even thinking about it. Man, he got killed because he was a sucker. He got killed because he was out there faking, acting like he was a gangster. He won't like that. And, that's, and dude was like, man, how you know what he was? Dude like, how you know who he was? You don't know him. You don't know him no more than I know him. Man, F you, F you. Boom. They get the rumbling in there, man. And the dude... They was on the park side. They was rumbling. It was a good rumble. They was head up. They banging. They banging. You know, ain't nobody get into the nothing. But dude took the dude down to the ground. And when he took him down to the ground, man, like I say, everything in the penitentiary is concrete and steel. When he took him down to the ground, man, he hit his head on that marble floor, bust his head open, man. When he bust his head open, he was jabbed like unconscious. But dude ain't had no mercy on him. Just kept beating him, beating him, beating him. You know what I'm saying? Crushed him in there. And he ended up having to go to the hospital. But like I say... Dudes was looking at the situation, but dudes ain't want to get in it because it would have been an all-out brawl. But dudes looking at the situation now, like, if you say something about Big or you say something about Pop, then if whatever, depending on the side you was on, you should expect beef. That's how serious it, it, it You should expect beef because dudes is beefing about this independent tension, you know. And it got to the point where, where I was at at one time, the administration was talking about taking their CDs out of out the uh, penitentiary. Yeah, they was talking about taking them CDs out there because so many dudes was going to medical, so many dudes was getting in fights, so many dudes was beefing and rumbling over. They was talking about banning the CDs where you couldn't even have them in there. You couldn't even order them because we only could order from a certain vendor, you know. So once they get to having all of these problems and all these beefs over these certain individuals, they can ban the CD. And if they ban the CD, then when they come in there, if you already ordered the CD or paid for the CD, now it's contraband and they're going to take it out the system. They're going to take it away from you so you don't waste your money. You see what I'm saying? But dudes was protesters on that too, threatening to say if they take the CDs, man, they're going to ride. Y'all done made me buy this stuff, man. Now y'all trying to take it from me, blah, blah, blah. But they were seriously considering it, even talking about it, and even they put out a memo about it saying that they was going to remove the CDs, they was going to be banned if they had any more you know, altercations behind these two individuals. You see what I'm saying? So Pop and Biggie had actually invaded the system, not even knowing that they invaded the system, where they made dudes pick sides. You see what I'm saying? They made them pick sides. The dudes was actually beefing in the penitentiary. And I know on the streets, you used to, I used to see all the clips of East Coast this, West Coast that, or they show a, 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 a caption or, or a little clip of Pop talking about, you know what I'm saying, want the West Side, and then you show Biggie talking about the East Side, and it was just crazy. And then you had all these other people, they would show taking sides, where Biggie is this and Biggie is that, and uh, the East Coast or the West Coast is this and West Coast is that, or Pac is this and that, and it was just on and on and on, man. And then when you start watching TV, and dudes watch that, and then they come out, after they done watched it and they started talking about it and elaborating on it, it seemed like it always ended up in a debate. 
You know what I'm saying? It's debate or argument, you know, where dudes is getting ready to do something to each other because they interpret the uh, messages one way when other people interpret it as the other way. So, man, it, it was just, I, I just remember those scenes, man, and I remember those incidents. And I can remember, man, when um the night that happened when Biggie ended up getting killed, you know, and, man, then the whole table shift. Now dudes is talking about Biggie. Yeah, I told you, I told you, Pop died, Biggie won't gonna live. That was mandatory, I could have told you that. And then they start quoting songs, and they got a song where Pac says, uh, if they kill me, don't worry. I expect retaliation in a hurry. And dudes was quoting that line to all Biggie fans. All the Pac fans was quoting that line to Biggie fans. Look at that. He got killed. And look what happened to him. Look what happened. Y'all know what y'all know what time it is. He won't be able to live. And Pop won't be able to live. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Biggie got killed like six months later. You know? So he said, yeah, you heard the line. If they kill me, don't worry. I expect retaliation in a hurry. Six months. Yeah, six months. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they was they was live with it, man. Like you watching the Super Bowl or you watching a uh, uh NBA championship or something. This how animated these dudes was about Biggie and Pac. That's how much uh uh you know emotions did they did these two dudes resonated in dudes and penitentiary, man. Dudes love both of these guys, man, tremendously. So much so that they was willing to fight for them, die for them, kill for them, push that Bethlehem for them, catch more time for them, and everything. It was just, just amazing. You know what I'm saying? It's something that you would not think. From being on the outside, you wouldn't even know that this was even possible. But trust me, it was possible, and it was going down in there, man, at, at, at uh, all the time. It was it was a crazy scene, and um, I just can remember it just so vividly, man. Man, it was just so, you know, it was so profound in prison, man. It was a big deal. It, it really was a big deal in prison, man. The Biggie versus Pop thing was big, man. And then, like I said, I think it was just so tragic that both of them lost their life. At such a young age, with so much potential, so much talent, it was just crazy, man, for them to lose their life like that. And I think that changed the culture. It changed the shift of uh, what was going on out there in the hip hop world. And um, you know, it was. I remember when then, you know, when uh, they had an interview like with Puffy, man, and you know, Puffy, you know, when all the stuff was going on, you know, Puffy was. Saying all the stuff he was supposed to say because he was with Biggie, you know, everybody was acting tough, everybody was putting on the front or whatever. Then I remember when, when Biggie was that with had got killed. Uh, I remember seeing an interview that they showed on Nightline or something like that, and they asked Puffy, they was talking to Puffy about it, and I guess he realized the beef was real then because you know, Pac was dead now, Biggie was dead, and they was asking them about who he is and about the beef and everything, and I. <laughs> I remember people started joking about that because Puffy was like so humble on the interview and he was like, Man, I'm I'm just I'm just Sean Combs, you know, I'm just a, a producer, I'm just, you know, somebody that's just trying to make it. I ain't with all of this, you know, this crazy stuff, man, you know, with people losing their lives or whatever, whatever. So then dudes was running around, yeah, you see how scared Puffy is, you see how scared he is, he know he next, he next. You know, it it was just crazy, man. It just was ongoing and ongoing, man. And um, like I said, a lot of dudes got hurt in the penitentiary over these two dudes. A lot of dudes got the beef and a lot of dudes just became uh, enemies over this situation here. All because of, of two talented brothers, man, that died way, way, way too soon, man. Way too soon. And, you know, that's, that's, a, uh, that's a testament to what's going on in the world today, man. We got to pay attention, man, to what's real and do what's real. And, and don't be relating to so much foolishness, man. And, and reacting to so much foolishness. And like I say, you locked up, man. When you locked up, you're supposed to be focusing on trying to get up out of the penitentiary, man. And not worrying about what somebody else is doing and, and who and, and what they're doing and who they are when they don't even know you. It's good to support somebody. It's good to like their music or whatever. But you still got to be conscious enough to know that that's not reality for you. That's their reality. It's not your reality. But, you know, like I say, both of them was two talented brothers. I do enjoy both of their music. Me, myself, personally, I'm a Pac fan, you know. I'm not saying I'm not a Biggie fan, but I just enjoy Pac music, you know, more. Biggie was super talented. I love a lot of his music. I listen to a lot of his music after I've worked out to several of his songs or whatever. But, um, 
you know, I just, like I said, I just think Pac was a, a super different dude, man. He had so many talents, man. And when he was making movies, you know, he was doing what he was doing. He just was a talented brother, man. And I, I feel like both of them lost their life way too soon, man. Way, way too soon. And I believe both of them would have been alive today. The whole landscape of the hip-hop culture would be different. You know, it would be different. And a lot of dudes that we learned about after, we didn't even know you know what I'm saying? That they would rise to this occasion, or they wouldn't, they probably wouldn't have been able to rise to the heights that they've risen to had it not been, you know, for Pop and Biggie's demise. Because these dudes was the head of the crop right here. You know, they was it. So how you gonna take that throne from them? I ain't seen now one of them falling off had they stayed, you know, alive because their talent was just that superior to most other people or all, all other people. But you know, everything came after them, man, you know. It was always still talk about Biggie and Pop. It's still talk about Biggie and Pop before I left. And it's probably still talk about Biggie and Pop in the penitentiary to this day. I guarantee it. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, both of them dudes, man, was very talented, man. It was sad to see them lose their life, man. And that's a life lesson to all of us. Don't get caught up in, you know, what's going on that really does not have a direct impact in your life. You can love somebody, love their music, love what they stand for and all of that. But they, you know what I'm saying, you cannot take and put your life on the line for somebody else. And especially if these people don't even know you. You know, you will be a martyr and lose your life for them and they'll never even know who you are. You know, never even know who you are. Never even knew you exist. So, you know, you need to keep that in mind, man. But, um, yeah, I just wanted to just speak on that, man, because people kept asking me what was my take on it. And there's a lot of other things that happened in the penitentiary that was monumental and changed the landscape of the prison that I was in. The OJ uh, verdict was crazy. Obama getting elected was crazy. The 9-11 um, thing was crazy. All of these things affected the penitentiary. All of these things you know, change the culture of what was going on in prison because dudes had their opinions. And in prison, opinions becomes beef. Opinions becomes uh, problems. Opinion becomes people getting hurt. So it, 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 it's different in prison, man, because we're in a confined environment and all of that irritation and frustration that you got about what's going on with you and your situation, you find other ways to channel that energy or, or get that energy up out of you. And usually it comes from what's going on out here in the social world, man, because we don't have a world in there. We just, you know, we just existing. We're not actually living. We existed when you're in the penitentiary. But y'all hit me back, man, and let me know in the comments, who's your favorite? Who was it? Was you a Biggie fan or a Pac fan? Or were you both? Let me know in the comments, man. Let me know your favorite Biggie line, your favorite Pac line, you know. I think one of my favorite park lines was, um, he said, so mandatory, my elevation, my lyrics, like orientation, so you could be more familiar with the brother you face. And I just think that line right there is so profound, and I think it defines him. I think it's his persona. I think it's his whole bravado. I think it's his whole essence, and that just one line right there. That's my favorite line, or at least one of my favorite lines of his. So y'all let me know what y'all's are. I appreciate y'all taking time to rock with me, man. We'll be right back at you in a minute with 33 years of prison stories, man. Y'all be safe out there. Y'all be smart, man. Make good decisions, man. TBP, man. We out here, man. We trying to make it happen. And uh, I can't do it without y'all, man. So much love. Much appreciation. I'll see you in a minute. Y'all be safe, man. And boom, boom, boom. Duck that hook, man. Thank you, special. Yeah, pure delicious. Pure deliciousness, man. My name is uh, Banky, man. Everybody calls me Banky. That's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years. Yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to have something because I'm rich in personality. You know, and uh, I'm rich in love. My family loves me. And that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.